ஸ்ரீ சாய் சச்சரித்ரா சாப்டர் டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் ஸ்டோரிஸ் ஆஃப் ஒன் வி ஹெச் தாக்கூர் நம்பர் டூ அனந்த்ராவ் பட்டான்கர் அண்ட் நம்பர் த்ரீ பந்தர்பூர் பிளீடர் இன் திஸ் சாப்டர் ஹேமத் பந்த் ரிலேட்ஸ் த ஸ்டோரிஸ் ஆஃப் விநாயக் ஹரிஷ்சந்திர தாக்கூர் பிஏ ஆனந்த்ராவ் பட்நாகர் ஆஃப் பூனா அண்ட் அ பிளீடர் ஃப்ரம் பந்தர்பூர் all these stories are very interesting which if carefully read and grasped will lead the readers on to the spiritual path preliminary it is a general rule that it is our good luck in the form of accumulation of merits in the past births that enables us to seek the company of saints and profit thereby in illustration of this rule hemant pand gives his own instance He was a resident of magistrate of Bandra a suburb of Bombay for many years a famous Mohammedan saint named Pir Maulana was living there and many Hindus Parsis and many others who followed different religions used to go to him and take his darshan his mujawir or priest by name Ainas pressed Hemant Pant many a time day and night for going to see him but for some reason or other he was not able to see him after many years his turn came and was he was called to shirdi where he was permanently enlisted in sai baba's darbar unfortunate fellows do not get this contact of the saints it is only the fortunate ones that get it institution of saints there have been institutions of saints in this world from time immemorial various saints appear incarnate themselves in various places to carry out the missions allotted to them but though they work in different places they are as it were one they work in unison under the common authority of the almighty lord and no full well what each of them is doing in his place and supplement his work where necessary an instance illustrating this is given below mr thakur mr v h thakur b a was a clerk in the revenue department and he once came to a town named wadgaon near belgaon sm country along with a survey party there he saw a canary saint appa and bowed before him the saint was explaining a portion from the book vichar sagar of nishal das a standard work on vedanta to the audience when thakur was taking his leap to go he said to him you should study this book and if you do so your desires will be fulfilled and when you go to the north in the discharge of your duties in future you will come across a saint by your good luck and then he will show you the future path and give rest to your mind and make you happy then he was transferred to junnar where he had to go by crossing the nahe ghat this ghat was very steep and impassable and no other conveyance than a buffalo was of use in crossing it so he had to take a buffalo ride through the ghat which inconvenienced and pained him much thereafter he was transferred to kalyan on higher post and there he became acquainted to nana sahib chandorkar he heard much about sai baba from him and wished to see him next day nana sahib had to go to shirdi and he asked thakur to accompany him he could not do so as he had to attend the thana civil court for a civil case so nana sahib went alone thakur went to thana but there were the case was postponed then he repented for not accompanying nana sahib still he left for shirdi and when he went there he found that nana sahib had left the place the previous day some of his other friends whom he met there took him to baba he saw baba fell at his feet and was overjoyed his eyes were full of tears of joy and his hair stood an end then after a while the omniscient baba said to him the path of this place is is not so easy as the teaching of the karni saint appa or even as the buffalo ride in the nani ghat in this spiritual path you have to put in your best exertion as it was very difficult when thakur heard these significant signs and words 
which none else can, than he knew, he was overwhelmed with joy. He came to know that the word of the Karni saint had turned true. Then joining both hands and placing his head on Baba's feet, he prayed that he should be accepted and blessed. Then Baba said, What Appa told you was all right, but these things have to be practiced and lived. Mere reading won't do. You have to think and carry out what you read, otherwise it is of no use. Mere book learning without the grace of the Guru and self-realization is of no avail. The theoretical portion was read from the work which are Sagar by Thakur, but the practical way was shown to him at Shirdi. Another story given below will bring out this truth more forcibly. Anantrao Patankar One gentleman from Pune by name Anantrao Patankar wished to see Baba. He came to Shirdi and took Baba's darshan. His eyes were appeased. He was much pleased. He fell at Baba's feet and after performing proper worship said to Baba, I have read a lot, studied Vedas, Vedans and Upanishads and heard all the Puranas. But still I have not got any peace of mind, so I think that all my reading was useless. Simple, ignorant, devout persons are better than myself. Unless the mind becomes calm, all book learning is of no avail. I have heard from many people that you easily give peace of mind to so many people by your mere glance and playful word. So I have come here. Please take pity on me and bless me. Then Baba told him a parable which was as follows. Parable of nine balls of stool, Nava Vida Bhakti. Once a Saudagar merchant came here. Before him, a mare passed her stool, nine balls of stool. The merchant, intent on his quest, spread the end of his daughter and gathered all the nine balls in it, and thus he got concentration or peace of mind. Mr. Patankar could not take out the meaning of the story, so he asked Ganesh Damodar, alias Dada Kelkar, what does Baba mean by this? He replied, I too do not know all that Baba says and means, but at his inspiration and I say what I come to know. The mare is God's grace and the nine balls excreted are the nine forms of bhakti, namely Shravana, hearing, Kirtana, praying, Smarana, remembering, Padasevana, resorting to the feet, Archana, worship, Namaskara, bowing, Dasya, service, Shakyatva, friendship, Atmane Vedana, surrender of the self. These are the nine types of bhakti. If any of these is faithfully followed, Lord Hari will be pleased and manifest himself in the home of the devotee. All the sadhanas, namely japa, vocal worship, tapa, penance, yoga practice and studying the scriptures and expounding them are quite useless unless they are accompanied by bhakti, that is devotion. Knowledge of the Vedas or fame as a great jnani and mere formal bhajan worship are of no avail. What is wanted is loving devotion. Consider yourself as the merchant or seeker after the truth and be anxious and eager like him to collect or cultivate the nine types of devotion. Then you will attain stability and peace of mind. Next day, when Pathankar went to Baba for salutation, he was asked whether he collected the nine balls of stool. Then he asked that he, being a purple fellow, should first be graced by Baba and then they will be easily collected. Then Baba blessed and comforted him, saying that he would attain peace and welfare. After hearing this, Batankar became overjoyed and happy. The Pandarpur Pleader We shall close this chapter with short story showing Baba's omniscience and his using it for correcting people and setting them on the right path. Once a pleader from Pandarpur came to Shirdi, went to the masjid, saw Sai Baba, fell at his feet and without being asked, offered some dakshina 
and sat in a corner eager to hear the talk that was going on then baba turned his face towards him and said how cunning the people are they fall at the feet of a dakshina but inwardly give abuses behind the back is not this wonderful this cap remark fitted the pleader and he had to wear take it none understood the remark the pleader grasped it but kept silent when they returned to the wada the pleader said to kaka sahib dikshit what baba remarked was perfectly right the dart or the remark was aimed at me it was a hint to me that i should not indulge in reviling or scandalizing others or calling by names when the sub judge or the munis about of pandarpur mr nulkar came and stayed here for the improvement of his health a discussion about this matter was going on in the bar room at, at pandarpur or as it would ever happens in many a bar room it was said or discussed there whether the ailments from which the sub judge suffered were ever likely to be got rid of without medicines by merely going after sai baba and whether it was proper for an educated man like the sub judge to have recourse to such methods the sub judge was taken to task that is he was criticized as also sai baba i also took some part in this affair and now sai baba showed the impropriety of my conduct this is not a rebuke to me but a favor and advice that i should not indulge in any scandal or slander of others and not interfere unnecessarily in others affairs shirdi is about 10 kos one kos is 3 miles distant from pandarpur still baba by his omniscience knew what transpired there in the bar room the intervening places rivers jungles and mountains were not a bar to his all perceiving sight and he could see or read the hearts of all there was nothing secret or veiled from him everything far and near was plain and clear to him as broad as daylight let a man be far or near he cannot avoid the all pervading gaze of sai baba from this incident the pleader took the lesson that he should never speak ill of others nor unnecessarily criticize them this his evil tendency was completely got rid of and he was set on the right path though the story refers to a pleader still it is applicable to all all should therefore take this lesson to heart and profit thereby sai baba's greatness is unfathomable so are his wonderful leelas his life is also such for he is parabrahmam lord god incarnate bow to shri sai peace be to all